welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming kind of a random video. I thought of this one while I was perusing the Sephora website and I feel like there's been so many new palettes coming out and I was like, ooh, I did a really good job. I said no to a lot of palettes this month, even though I feel like I also bought a ton of palettes and like single eyeshadows and stuff. So anyway, it all evens out, right? So I have 22 palettes that I said no to and if you guys are interested in hearing which ones I passed on, just keep watching. Now you guys know this video is going to be hella long so you better grab a snack. The first palette that I did end up passing on is the Naked Heat Mini Pro Petite whatever the fuck palette. Now I actually did buy the Naked Heat palette and it was okay. I just couldn't justify keeping it for that price point. I knew I wasn't going to use it. I felt like I already had those colors. Urban Decay used to be my love. Like they were my first high-end brand. But I've moved on, guys. I've spread my wings. I've flown away from Urban Decay. And it is sad because, you know, it's kind of cool. Sometimes people have that brand that they keep going back to constantly. But Urban Decay is not that brand for me. And I was just, I just thought this palette had so much potential, but they really fucked it up. And it's weird, the timing. Like, why did they come out with it after they came out with a big one? Like, maybe they should have come out together. Maybe they should have picked different shades. I don't fucking know. It was a terrible idea, personally, and I am so happy I passed on it. The next palette is the Urban Decay Kristen Leanne palette. Now, what is up with Urban Decay coming out with all these collaborations and then they inevitably go on sale? I feel like either Urban Decay is not in touch with what their consumers want, so they're just collabing with random people. Like, do they ever take, like, surveys and be like, hmm, who would our customers connect with? Like, is Kristen Leanne popular enough? to actually meet like a mass mass market I get it she's edgy she's got tattoos she really lines up with the Urban Decay brand but I feel like they're constantly you know doing these collabs and then the palettes are on sale and I just want to be like why why is that happening to Urban Decay like do they just have that much money and that much marketing and that much product development that they just recycle their shit and come out with new palettes all the time because you guys have to admit this Urban Decay Kristen Leanne palette looks exactly like the one they came out with John Michelle Basquiat. It's the same colors organized in different layouts and uh, it's just a new year and same old Urban Decay so I'm really happy I passed on it. It actually is on sale right now that palette for $19.50. That's under 20 bucks and it's unreal because I swear that palette only just came out like last month. And I'm so tempted to buy it, but I've been holding strong because I'm like, Karen, you are not about to support this kind of foolery that Urban Decay is doing. So I'm passing on that. The next palette that I am passing on or that I said no to are the MAC Girls palettes. They have like eight of these palettes and every time I see swatches of them or like anything related to them, the the pictures look terrible. They look dry as hell. And I just I just don't know if MAC is going to realize that people have stopped drinking the Kool-Aid when it comes to MAC. MAC is not the shit anymore when it comes to eyeshadows. It's not the shit anymore when it comes to lipsticks. I don't really know who is still shopping at MAC on a regular basis, but you guys are wasting a ton of money because there's brands like ColourPop out there that are kicking MAC's ass. And, I mean, it's it's what happens if you turn into a complacent giant of a company and nobody really pushes you to be better. And now all these indie brands are around and we just have so many more options as a consumer. Like, I don't have time for brands like MAC and for boring, boring palettes like these. I like the concept that they went with, like, a palette themed on girls and different personalities. But, holy crap, this palette is boring. They all put me to sleep. Now another palette I'm super proud of that I passed on is the Becca Ocean Jewels palette. I'm not really proud on the fact that I passed on it. it. It's not good value for money. It's just like Becca has that thing where I feel like they have their niche and their niche is highlighters and like powder face products. So when they try to do something different, it's really difficult for consumers to process because they're known for their highlighters. So when Becca does something like an eyeshadow palette, it's like, it's like, can I, can I compute? Can I compute? This computer is broken. Plus, I still feel like enough people remember the Jaclyn Hill eyeshadow palette incident. So, like, an eyeshadow palette from Becca is not what I want. Like, that's just not on my list of things to buy. 
the Too Faced Life is a Festival palette. Who wouldn't want such a happy-go-lucky palette? I mean, do you want your coworkers to take you seriously? Um, I sure don't. I just want to look like a freaking unicorn all day long. <laughs> That's the kind of attitude you need to wear the Too Faced Life is a Festival palette. Because let me tell you, life is not a festival, you guys. You actually have to work. You have to go to school, you have to make a living, and you have to adult. Okay, let's make a palette called Life is Not a Festival. It actually consists of doing dishes and laundry. How about that palette? I sign up to design that palette. Let's see what Too Faced can come up with. I just, I just don't get Too Faced, and that's not the only palette from Too Faced I have on here. I also have their Just Peachy Mattes palette and their White Peach palette. The Just Peachy Mattes palette did almost get me. I was like, ooh, all these people are saying really good things about this palette. But I was like, girl, don't even think about another Too Faced palette because I've been let down every single time. And the White Peach palette was... Was that like a practical joke? Because I swear I didn't see anyone say good things about that palette unless they were sent the palette. So... Keep that in mind. Some of this shit, it's just like, why? Nobody is using that palette except for the people that got it sent to them by the brand, okay? We're not stupid, people. Come on. Okay, so another palette I'm super proud of passing on is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam or Soft Clam palette. Now, I am not going to lie. I'm so <laughs> tempted to buy this because I know Anastasia's mattes are usually very, very decent excuse us subculture had to go around and be different but for the most part Anastasia's palettes are you know just always a hit and I'm tempted but then I think of like the thousands of Colourpop palettes I have in my collection and how they're all pretty much like neutral mattes and perfect like wedding type everyday type collections and I'm like no Karen you really don't need an overpriced color pop palette which is basically what the soft glam palette is so I am hard passing on that palette the Tarte Be a Mermaid and Make Waves palette I think I have the same thing to say about that palette as I do the Too Faced Life is a Festival palette it's like no dude you don't get to be make waves and be happy on the beach all day long okay <laughs> it's not real life Get it together! I sound like such a pessimist right now. I'm really not. I just, these palettes make me laugh. I'm sorry. Okay, Urban Decay Back Talk Eye and Face Palette. I'm actually shocked at how many people were like going on on YouTube about how they were going to get this palette. Like, first of all, could they have made a more Caucasian friendly palette? <laughs> like, do they actually expect people with my skin tone or darker to wear this Back Talk palette? I hope not because. I feel like it's just going to look like a chalky mess on my face. The Natasha Denona Tropic Palette. I have seen some swatches of that palette and it doesn't look like it's any good, guys. I don't feel like it's worth $129. I can already tell you that if I bought it, I was going to hate it. Like, I just don't like the Natasha Denona formula. I don't understand what kind of Kool-Aid everyone else is drinking. Every once in a while, I'll see some people say, like, something really positive, and then they're like, but, you know, the mattes aren't the greatest. Or, like, but the shimmers aren't the greatest. I'm like, so then don't you mean the palette's just not the greatest? Because, like, people keep hyping up Natasha Denona, but I'm like, are we all using the same product? Because I just don't know if you understand we're paying $129. Like... This isn't like a $50 palette. It's a $129 palette. Is it making a $129 worthy difference on your face? I don't think so. You know what I mean? So I'm just really glad I talked myself out of that situation. Now, the Kat Von D Divine palette, I've heard really good things. There are a lot of Kat Von D fans on my YouTube subscription feed, and they really seem to enjoy the palette. Personally, it was just not my makeup vibes, and I feel like I have that blue and that green somewhere in my collection so I didn't think I needed it but if you guys got your hands on it let me know your thoughts the other palette I said no to was the Violet Voss like a boss palette say that five times fast and you guys I talked about this in my will I buy it video I just feel like it looks so much like the Violet Voss Laura Lee palette I mean 
What is the difference? And you guys, there are literally shades in here that I can look at and I can tell you I've never dipped a brush in them. And so I think I'm actually going to maybe sell this palette at some point. It's in my for sale drawer. I'm just leaving it there right now to ferment to see how I feel, like if I'd be sad if it was gone. But oh lord, that palette is just... It's just like, why are they doing the same thing? They're just changing the name and like kicking out a few different shades and putting in a few different shades and trying to like sell you another palette that you freaking don't need. You don't need it. You don't okay, the next palette is the Viseart Petite Pro Palette 2. I didn't even want the first one, so the second one is just a no. I just, why Viseart, why? You don't need to do this. You don't need to make these petite pro bullshit like I already have your matte palettes just keep making these they're so good I don't know why they're trying to combine their shimmers with their mattes their mattes are far far superior to their shimmers and it just it just breaks my heart because like why are you trying to fix something that isn't broken it wasn't broken you should have just left it the way it was and now they're trying to be all commercial and capture more market share and it's like why Okay, the next palette is the Makeup Forever Star Lit Glitter Palette. Now, you guys, I'm not a fan of Makeup Forever's eyeshadow formula. I never have been. I've seen all these people. I remember when they came up with those really fucking expensive, like, circular shaped eyeshadows. Like, I saw people's collections, and I was just like, girl, you just spent $30 for an eyeshadow. Like, is that real life? And... It just always like blew my mind that people were spending that kind of money on an eyeshadow palette. And so when I saw this one, I'm like, you want me to pay 40 something dollars for five glitter eyeshadows? Like, I'm not doing that kind of drugs, okay? I, I'm good. I can say no to that shit real quick. And it was just so funny because I saw so many people buy that palette. I'm like, whoa, like do you not have ColourPop eyeshadows? Like, I don't know, I don't understand. Okay, next palette is a Tarte Foil Finger Paints palette. I actually swatched that palette in store and it's pretty freaking bomb. It feels nice and cushiony and soft, but they feel like ColourPop eyeshadows and I don't understand the price point. Now Tarte did kill the packaging on that palette. It's gorgeous. Like it's like chunky, it's like turquoisey and it's gold and it's beautiful. But holy shit, I don't want it. Like fuck that. Mm-mm. Okay, Urban Decay Troublemaker Palette. Now, this isn't really something I had to say no to. I think I contemplated it when it went on sale, but I'm like, girl, no, those are not my colors by any means. So it's not really a palette I said no to, but it was just like a palette that came out that I was really not interested in. Another one that I'm really tempted to try is the Ciate London Chloe Morello Palette. Now, this one is currently on sale as well, but again, I'm like, mmm... Nah, like, I just feel like those shades look so ashy. I did get to see the palette in person when I was in Vegas, and I was not impressed, so I just need to remember my feelings of how I felt when I first saw that palette and remind myself that I don't need that palette. Now, a newer palette that I saw when I was perusing Sephora.com was the Touch Insole Metalist High Shine Bouncy Cream Shadow Palette. I have a Sephora gift card and a Sephora coupon, and they're both burning a hole in my pocket saying, use me, use me, Karen, use me. So I was like, okay, what do I want from Sephora? Well, I already bought the Pat McGrath palette I wanted and forgot to use my coupon. So there's that. And then I'm like, what can I buy? What can I buy? So I was looking at the eyeshadow palettes and I saw this palette. And I'm like, oh, then I was like, okay, let me read the description. The description sounded like they were describing a, a ColourPop Super Shock Shadow. Again, I get that there are other brands that have like the bouncy, almost cream-like eyeshadow formula, but I'm not going to pay money to buy that because I already have every freaking Super Shock Shadow that I need, so I just don't see the point of paying extra to buy one that is a palette and is not airtight because those... Formulas do need to be pretty airtight, otherwise they will dry out pretty okay, fast. Okay, another palette that was a no-brainer for me to say no to was the Bobbi Brown Crystal Drama Eyeshadow. Now, I haven't heard anyone talk about Bobbi Brown eyeshadows very recently, to be quite frank. And I don't really know who is buying it. Probably really bougie, rich people, because Bobbi Brown is kind of like that older, higher-end brand. And their palettes just look so boring. And then if you read the reviews, they're not good. Like... 
The one they came out with for Christmas time, I was kind of tempted because the shades look really cool online. But then I saw that palette in person, I'm like, what? No. No! And so I was so glad I didn't buy that palette. And this one looks exactly the same way. So, yeah. Another mm -hmm. palette I said no to was the NARS Danger Control Eyeshadow Palette. I really don't need it, and I don't need this palette. NARS packaging always draws me in, completely sucks me in, but when it comes to their eyeshadow palettes, I've just been let down so many times that I refuse to try out any more of their eyeshadow palettes. And then the last palette I want to talk about that I said no to is the Venus XL palette by Lime Crime. Now this was a palette I actually really wanted because, um, you know, it's like what I do. I like to review things on the internet, the makeup, the colors are totally my makeup vibes, but I have to start putting my foot down with my palette purchases because it's like, at this point I have so many palettes to review for you guys. I haven't even made a dent in those yet, so I really had to be firm with myself and tell myself, like, you can't just keep buying eyeshadow palettes, like, this is getting out of control. So hopefully you guys aren't too bothered that you won't get to see a Venus XL review from me. But yeah, if you guys have the palette, definitely let me know what your thoughts are. Okay guys, that is everything for this video on palettes I've said no to. Let me know what other palettes you think I should maybe review on my channel. I'm really curious to know if there are any particular palettes you guys want to hear my thoughts on. So if there were any that I mentioned in this video that you think I should definitely pick up because you'd be interested in a review, I'd love for you to leave that in the comments down below. Other than that guys, I am so thankful you stopped by to check out this video. And please don't forget to hit subscribe if you are interested. I do upload every other day. So you do get quite a bit of content from me and I will catch you on the next one. Bye guys.